G'day guys and welcome to episode 2 of my auto drive and course play tutorials. In this episode I'll be showing you how to use the field work mode in course play and also incorporating auto drive into it just to give you a little bit of help with setting things up. To start with we're going to use auto drive so again we're just going to come over to our auto drive box and you can see I've got nothing set up at the moment so let's just hit that bottom right triangle there which is the edit mode bring that up and then we'll just left click the record button to start our course now I've already gone around this field so I know that this big old new Holland can get around it so let's just start a course and I'm like I said I'm gonna go the whole way around the field and in future episodes you can see why I like to do this it's really helpful with harvesters and forage harvesters now when you're doing a course like this try and give auto drive a bit of room for error so always try and swing them out a little bit gentler is probably the right word just so that there's nothing too sharp because you might be able to do it but the AI can sometimes have a little bit of a hiccup with it and crash into walls and flip <laughs> which uh, may be funny but it can be annoying when it continues to happen so now luckily on this side we don't seem to have a ditch so we can follow the field up another thing to consider is if you're using maybe a small tractor to lay out the course but you're actually going to be using as I've got here like a dually or a, quite a big tractor try and take into consideration the space it's going to be taken out and what it's going to be towing bit jittery there on the plow, probably not ideal but that'll do. Right, so I'm going to swing it back onto this road because I know there's no traffic on it. Now we've got a bridge up here so let's try and slot it down the middle. Looks alright. Yeah, perfect. Alright. Bring it back in. so we'll link these up so again let's get a bit closer there she goes so again we'll left click end our recording again go over to your node goes blue left click it it's now green and we'll actually I'm gonna just link it up to here so it's a little bit smoother transition and then we'll just alt left click to delete that node there now another thing I didn't tell you in the last story is if you actually go over a node and hold down both of your mouse buttons you can actually move the node as well so that can be a helpful thing just to try and customize and adjust things if need be all right so what I'm going to do now is we're just going to find a nice area with a lot of space I reckon this will be good so again the red lines connect to the node so let's name it now I've already bought this field so this is field 2 so I'm actually going to name this node field 2. So, uh, doing capitals make it a little bit easier to see for everyone. Cool. Done. So, now we've got that. So, that's all we're going to use auto drive for now. So, let's just get out of the edit mode. Now, if course play has not come up the menu for it, just hit your delete button to bring it up. And today we're going to be focusing on field work. So this is just a transfer drive start to finish, which generally you're not going to use um, in course play if you've got auto drive, because auto drive is just better. But field work is something auto drive just cannot do, and it really makes things uh, a lot easier, especially if you've got a big farm or you're trying to sort of manage a farm. It, it just makes things a little bit easier. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to go course generation. So you can just see I'm hovering over here. Just left click that. And now you can see we've got a whole box that comes up with lots of different things. So normally this will actually just be blank. I've already tested this. So just left click on it and it will bring up the field. So if I go currently load a course and I left click on it, it's going to bring up field two. So that's perfect. Now these are all different things that you can play with, okay? So let's get 
set it all back up to so there's nothing. And let's just go generate fuel cores. Now course play is clever enough that it's actually going to know that on this map there's a little gully and there's no field in that. So it's actually going to plot us a course around that gully, which is which is great. But there is a but. It hasn't realized that there is a, a dirty great big transformer as you can see so we're going to need to tell it that there is one in the field so again oh and another thing as well I do apologize is if you are wanting to go between your tractor and clicking on here instead of the toggle your mouse wheel to get on here you're actually going to want to right click down so right click, I'm moving the camera around, right click it again, and now I'm actually using the course play editor. Okay. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to bypass islands. I'm actually going to put it on circle. You can do simple, but I'm going to do circle. And let's generate that. And there you go. So now it's actually realized that there's an obstacle in the path. So it's going to drive around the obstacle. So that's something you've got to take into consideration when you're building something. Um, because obviously otherwise it's going to just go straight into it. Now headlands is something that I quite like to do. So I'm going to do two headlands. And I was a little bit silly here. I've actually gone and done my course anti-clockwise. So I'm going to make it anti-clockwise now, or sorry, counterclockwise. And we're going to do it, set it like that for it. And I'm actually going to turn this field into a corn field with a forage harvester. So that's not such an issue that it's counterclockwise. Now, headland corners. Now this is how sharp it's actually going to make corners. So if we just generate the field with it set up, The tractor's actually going to stop and almost do a three-point turn at each of these to get around. And even on some of these corners for the headland. If you make that smooth, generally course play is a lot more accurate. It won't get stuck as easily, especially if there's uh, fences and different things at the edge. But it does mean it's not going to pick up as much of the area. So if I go over to that and go smooth, I'll generate that, you actually see because I know there's a fence down here I reckon it could get stuck so now it's actually made this a nice smooth turn, it will actually turn, it won't try and stop so I'm just going to leave it on smooth and we'll see how we go with that and we've generated it, this here, down here, this is your working width so I know this plow is 12.4 meters so we can leave it on, but if it's got the wrong measurement and you know what it is, you can auto adjust it using your scroll wheel. Or this here will auto calculate what um, tool you're using, but it can sometimes be wrong. So sometimes it's best to look it up and actually manually do it, I find. So now that we've got it set it up how we want, let's go back. And where's the start point? The start point's there. Now if I come back to my edit mode, I've actually got field two here. And my tractor is going to drive up and it's going to need to do a U-turn. So that's actually not what we want. So let's go back to course generation. And now let's actually select a different starting location. So you can pick corners or you can pick current vehicle position. I actually want select the position. So you see if I zoom in, there's actually a waypoint, and that's my field waypoint. Well I actually want this where we're going to start the course a little bit further on and you'll see why in a minute. So I've clicked it further on. I'm going to generate field course. Perfect. That actually looks like it was a little bit neater for it anyway. Now let's go back. So now you can see it's ahead of my course, which is exactly what I want. Now I'm going to save this, and I'm just going to save this as field 2, 12 meter. You can name it whatever you want, 
but generally I find then I can use this course for multiple tools that I know are around that 12 meter mark. And I'm just going to show you a little thing you can do in tracking. So if I just go drive course now, it's actually going to find it and just start the course. But I actually want to show you what you can do with auto drive. So let me turn off the editing mode for auto drive. And now you can see there's a little course play symbol that pops up. This will actually start your loaded up course at the trigger point. So you can see I'm going to drive to field 2. I'm going to click this and it's going to start this course I've got loaded up. So let's try it. And hopefully, with a bit of luck, it won't let me down and make me look like an idiot. <laughs> I've just downloaded this uh, New Holland and um, it's really good actually, I quite like it. It's a fantastic looking tractor and um, the interior is really good as well actually, looks fantastic. Great mod if anyone's looking for a blue machine to add to the course. I think it's based on a reverse tool so I'll be honest I don't know how accurate it is but it looks great to me. It looks Fantastic, so. Now this is what I said, you, you've got to try and make it as smooth as possible with your turns, because you can see that it slowed right down. If there was a fence, it would have actually probably shot into a fence. But it's very important that you try and make it as easy as possible for course flow and for auto drive when you're building routes. Now again, because this thing's bouncing up and down, it might be worth changing the speed limit down, especially over this bridge where I know there's a bit of a bump and it's getting some hair time with the plow. It's probably not ideal. I'm not saying you do in real life, but hey ho. And now it's raining, which is absolutely perfect. So it's going to make this field nice and muddy with my mod I've got installed for real mud. Now you see it's going to slow right down because it's getting up to the waypoint. Okay guys, just had a little bit of a glitch there. So uh, before I started this tutorial, I was actually messing around with my waypoints and I forgot to reset the waypoint after I renamed it. So it's very important that you reset the waypoint, otherwise sometimes it will read it as the old waypoint. So what happened is my tractor freaked out and couldn't find the waypoint and thought it was looking for the test waypoint I had. So now that I've reset field 2 it should now work. So what I've done is I've gone to course play, we'll set it, we've got field 2 this is still set up where it should be, we're wanting the first waypoint hit drive and we'll see if second time's a charm so what happened last time, I had actually a test waypoint right where it's already driven past and it was actually still trying to get to it. So when you reset a waypoint, it wipes the previous waypoints. So you can see it's arriving just now. We should get a little notification in a second that's reached its waypoint. There it is. Now it will take a few seconds for course play to kick in and find where it should be going. There she goes, look. So now it's actually going to drive straight to the course we've set for the plow. And it should auto unfold, there she goes, now it's auto unfolding the plow for us. And it's just going to start following our waypoints. Now I have got real mud set which is going to make life pretty difficult. So I'm actually going to cheat here and I'm actually going to tab over to the old Ford. As I found out that with the real mud mod, if you're not actually in the tractor, it's not affected. So I know this is kind of cheating but I am trying to show a tutorial here so sinking into the uh, the dirt is probably not ideal, <laughs> so that's the only reason it missed 
that patch there is because it actually just couldn't get any grip and couldn't turn. So because I've got smooth turns on, you can see how it's just going to gently go around these corners. And it's still got stuck. So can you see the importance of having a nice big area? And this is why anything fenced is an ideal. So I probably actually need a smaller plow, if anything. So I'll be back, we'll get a smaller plow, and we'll see how we go. I actually found out that it was the tractor causing the problem. So the New Holland um, just wasn't liking causeway. And you will find this, unfortunately, some tractors, some modded tractors, just don't gel with course play. Um, and yeah, that's where you're just going to have to try a different vehicle. So I, I grabbed a vehicle after trying a few different plow sizes. I grabbed a vehicle and I know works. And uh, it was doing it easy. So you can see it's actually just going to follow the entire course from start to finish. And it's just going to keep going. Now, now while the uh, the big Ford's doing that, why don't we get another tractor going on this course? So if I go into the shop, and let's have a look. What, what can we do? What can we do? Let's just get a cultivator for now. Now, I try and get a similar sized uh, planter, cultivator, anything like that, because then you can use the same route and it makes life a little bit easier. So, let's try it now. That one was uh, perfect. That's 12 meters. Oh, she needs a bit more power than what, uh, than what we're packing, but... Demonstration purposes, it should be okay. <laughs> See how this goes, a little bit unrealistic, but that's fine. There you go, look. Just come around the bend, going all the way down. So I showed you how to use auto drive to start course play, but what if you just want to use course play? Well, that's what I'm about to show you now. Ooh, oh yeah, she's a bit big. <laughs> Hopefully this goes alright everyone. Let's open up course play. Alright, so what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna come over to manage courses. So that's the second window here. You can see I saved the 12 meter field too. So let's load that up. So now it's actually loaded in. So you can see our course is down here and it's coming up. So we can now use this course as many times as we like. So if we now click on field work, you can now go, do you want to start the first waypoint, current waypoint, next closest waypoint and nearest waypoint. Now, a top tip is I'd probably only ever use first waypoint and nearest waypoint. So this is, as it says, it's the nearest waypoint you're at. So if you can't see your waypoints, just come over to the cog here, show waypoints, click it, and you can see it's now bringing up all the waypoints across the field. Now, on massive fields, this can cause some serious lag. So be careful and I wouldn't leave it on. So let's just turn that off. So I'm just going to start this from the beginning. And then hit drive course. And you can stop it as well. You can return the first point. I'd generally leave that alone. That's fine. But you can if you want to. Just going to unfold that. Now I'm just going to tab over to the new Holland. Just so the old four doesn't hopefully get stuck. Let's see if she'll actually pull it. That will be the next test. And the answer is... Barely. <laughs> but she is doing it. So... 
Oh yeah, no, he does not like that at all. And no. Maybe we should get a bigger, bigger beastie to uh, pull this one. So uh, I'll be back, guys, after I was a little bit optimistic. Alright guys, I've swapped out to a bigger tractor just to pull it along. So you can see now yeah, pulling along quite nicely and just to team it up the uh, the Ford's coming along as well. So that's actually looking pretty good. Now if you've actually got a lot of things on the field, I'll just wait for them to get around to a straight before I clock into the vehicles. Because I'm going to show you if you have a lot of vehicles on the same courses how you can try and stop them running into the back of each other if you had a lot of things going there. Right, so now we've gone onto the straight, should be safe to swap into them. So let's just get over. So what you can do is if you come over to, uh, oh, bear with me guys, this one here. So you come to this here, vehicle specific settings, you can actually go vehicle convoy activated, and then it will actually give you a distance between it and the following vehicle. So you've got to activate it on both though. So again, vehicle specific settings, vehicle convoy activated and distance 200. Now obviously they are a long way away from each other. So you can see that that's really not going to do too much. But another thing that I find that actually works better Oh, is the speed, the speed limits. So, if they're on the field, if you make them all the same speed, or maybe you want the behind one a little bit slower, this generally means they're not going to crash into each other. So, this is another great way of trying to get a bunch of vehicles on the same course without running into the back of each other. Now, you can see there they did clabber a little bit because they're next to each other, just because the widths of these plows are a little bit over the 12 metre mark. But apart from that, pretty good. So, even that didn't go 100% smooth, I hope that's really helped you guys out. And um, please leave a, a comment, guys, on anything else you want to see, because I'll hopefully be able to find a few other things that can help you. I'm planning on doing some harvesting videos as well on how to do that and forage harvester. But yeah, I mean, pretty cool. Just to see more. It's pity the uh, the new Holland really didn't want to do it. Maybe we'll test in a few other things, see if it'll work. But it just did not like. Okay. It likes auto drive though. Has no drums with that. See, so everything likes likes the auto drive. So, All right. Uh, thanks guys and look forward to see you in the future. Bye.